I prefer really not to um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Turn me up, kid Spiral. Okay, put in. Good now. Well, do the intro again. Ah, this is the tour time doing the intro. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. Boys and girls, episode three, If I Speak podcast, season three. Um, I have a very, very special guest that's not coming in today. He's actually a supporter of the show, which is which is crazy because I started this thing, man. I didn't think I'd, like, you know, people be finding me having this type of impact. But yeah, man, she even changed her flight to be in um, to <laughs> She might be going home today, but she changed her flight to do the pod because, like, it's a, it's a very important conversation I'm about to have with this lovely young lady that's giving me her time. Um, so without further ado, my guest, Niv, what's the story? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm all good, Niv. Um, so this this conversation, um, before I get into it, I want to, like, obviously, I've been chatting to you and, um, you know, I know this is going to flow well because you can talk yeah. and, um, you know, you're a podcast watcher as well. Yeah, a couple of people over in the UK seeing it, you know, and stuff. So but before I get into it, I want to know a little bit about you and obviously the audience know a little bit about mm. you. So, so just chat about, like, you know, yourself and your upbringing and, okay, and stuff. Well, um, I grew up in Dublin, in Parmistown. Um, it was ju just me, mum, dad, and then school, all of that was normal. And then when I was like 12, we moved to Tipperary. My mum got um, moved for her job, so we moved and I sat, went into sixth class in school down there, did secondary school, all the normal things, being a being a bold teenager and getting up to mischief and all that kind of stuff. And finished school, went to went to college thinking I was doing something I wanted to do, went to do um social care in Carlo. Mm. But I, I just wanted to go and party. So <laughs> as you do. So so I lasted nine months up there. And then I was like, right, this I can't keep going because I didn't even go to college. I think I went for like a month out of the nine months. So I was like, right, I need to go home and sort my life out. So I reapplied and I went to college to study um, sports strength and conditioning. So mm. I did that for four years in LIT in Thurless and I qualified from that. I got um, Two one, and I did my personal trainer and fitness instructor qualification through that as well. So now that is that's my job now. But I've had a I've had a few jobs in between that. But that's my that's my job just, now. Just a little background into you, yeah. And uh, obviously, um, do you know what? I skipped a bit as well because I don't know why I'm all over the shop. I was out <laughs> last night. And your head's gone. You always have like because like you said, you watched the John episode mm. and why that was so good is because obviously. I did in depth research yeah, into into um, you know John and even yeah, but he's an he's an actual no, I hear it, no, I hear it, but like even like other people, no, I, I don't worry, I looked into you as well, don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> I had to look into bleeding. Uh, that's a good thing. I went, I went through your Twitter and you're bleeding <laughs> Instagram and stuff. So nah, what I want to talk to you about because obviously you're clearly looking into you, you're clearly into um, you know obviously black culture, music, mm -hmm. the podcast you listen to, the people that you know and stuff, yeah. So I have a section of the show where I call "What's the Gig," so right. it's kind of an icebreaker, yeah. Okay. I said I, I jumped. I'm sorry, guys, I'm not the bleeding jumping, right? But um, I have a section of the podcast called "What's the Gig," mm -hmm. so it's basically it's, it's an icebreaker. I like talking politics. They do um, they zingers. do they do zingers. Mm -hmm. Where's your head at when they first started before the bleeding got too big to do it now? Yeah, they used to do where's your head at the start. So where was your okay. head at? Put some minds. What's the gig? So what's the story? So have you watched them? Um, so the gig this week is yeah. I right. finished that bleeding Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you watched it? I've watched some of it. Right. So I finished it. Right. Right. So why I want to talk about that is because you know, um, what annoyed me more than like the killings, yeah, is like. Black people, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this like a, because I'm going past all this, oh, black this and mm -hmm. black power, and I'm mm -hmm. going past that, but mm -hmm. it, it was very upsetting that, because a lot of them deaths could have been avoided. The, the if, way he treated them. If, if mm -hmm. not even, no, not even him, it's the it, authorities. A hundred percent, and the way the the next door neighbour... Glenda, yeah, yeah. went to the, the police so many times, and they were just fobbed off and ignored because of the colour of their skin, basically. They weren't going to, they weren't going to take them seriously and that's the that's the way i i would see it like that it was just like why should we listen to them and mm. like especially the one in, from what i've seen the most distressing one i've seen is the young boy and like he's so out of it in a blanket and like the um glenda and her daughters are literally pleading with the police to please do something and he could and jeffrey could just bare face lie to them and it was accepted and they went into the house and another thing it wasn't just about 
the way black people were being treated but obviously they went in and, and were like oh I hope we don't catch HIV in here you know like against, like against gay people or whatever so it just shows that the way things were then but at the way society kind of is now there's there's some parts of it that haven't really changed and why why I say that exactly so I'm looking at it like this so that was about back in the 80s it, 90s yeah, yeah that was going on so obviously even now right there's a situation where uh, um, you live in London, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, so the Chris Cabot situation. Yeah. So yeah. A, a thing that a lot of black people do as well, that really annoys me. There's certain people, and I know you're watching as well, yeah? I don't give a bollocks. There's certain people who are, we call here coons, yeah? Right. And fools. I like to, like to know, tap dance for the, the white man. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I don't give a okay. shit. Right? Okay. So they were saying, because Chris is involved in gangs, right. you live by the gun, you die by the gun type of thing. So... And then, and where I'm going with this is, during the day now, we find out that he was getting chased by the car Th that, that, he had no that, that had no sirens. That like, I'm a police officer, stop the car. Mm. So if you're driving now, yeah, and someone's following you, and it's an unmarked car, are you gonna stop? Because that could be fucking anybody. No, you know what I mean? Like, so, so that's what I'm saying. It's like they went, followed him, and killed with, with no reason. Mm -hmm. Before they, they were, he had a weapon on him. This, 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 that, and that. And it goes back to watching that show. It's just like. We're still suffering them type of things today. 100%. Because I'm telling you now, flip the, flip the roll, roll reverse. If that's a black person with a young, they, they're looking into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Whether that's people like it or not. 100%. You know? And the thing is, with, with, with Chris, and like, it's, it's disgusting what has happened. But if it was, if the roles were reversed and it was he killed a police officer or he killed one of the feds in England, he'd be in Belmarsh awaiting trial for murder and you could be guaranteed that he would be going down for life for killing an officer. Mm. But that officer has only been suspended. He had went back to active duty after the incident. So, like, what, what, what is that telling... What's that telling black people in England? It's just, like... Or even all over the world. It doesn't even have to be England. It's just... it's That's where it's happened. And it's only because people are making noise about it on social media and like his family came out and pleaded to have the the body cam footage um released and stuff like that that there probably wouldn't even be that much of a deal about it if people weren't being so open about it on social media mm. and you touched on something there police going back to work and stuff like it's like even with the, the Dahmer situation you know obviously there was pressure from obviously jesse jackson gets involved in all this civil rights okay. stuff blah 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 and you know them officers got back to work, you know, like they got reinstated back to work, like after being so incompetent, which they should have been held accountable as well. Yeah, and it was a part, and I don't know, obviously some some parts are fictional as well, but it was a part, you probably haven't watched, I'm probably spoiler, spoiler okay, alert here, yeah, sorry, but um, okay. there's a part where there's a man, a lotion man, I don't want to, I don't want to butcher where he's from, but obviously he's getting a claim now, obviously what happened to his son and all that, and he's okay. getting phone calls, getting called this, that, that, and the tour, go back home, all this. And then there's a part then that shows that the people are abusing them. It's not like, you know, people from the outside. It's actually the police officers that are doing that. Do you oh, get me? Wow. And even, and that's what you hear a lot of Americans saying as well. It's like, these police officers are secretly the KKK. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like I said, even during the day, when I, when I was going to work, and I seen a protest, yeah? And I'll end, I'll end up with this, because I don't want to, because I don't want to be getting... We, 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 haven't got, we haven't even got into it yet. I'm, I'm getting vexed. <laughs> but um, I, I, was, I was going home from work during the day, and I was like, uh, I seen a protest. I don't know what country it was for. And I was looking at it, and I was like, What's the point in this? Like, mm. we're, like, no one's gonna happen here. Nothing's, yeah. We can protest, shout all we want. Like, no one's gonna, like, I even feel for, like, hopefully Chris family to get justice for, yeah, for what happened in all, but going against the system is, is, it's hard because. It's an uphill battle, like. Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how do you go against, like, with that lack of resources yeah, and manpower to do it? You get me? And, and the, the narrative that people have tried. So what if, if he was involved with a gang? But that gang is also a very, very successful music group that were the founders of Drill in the UK. Mm. So they have success as as a, as a music group. It's not just about gangs. There's there's gangs all over London that do music. It's just that that's the way things are. Mm. But why should they be... Why should that be his story? Because that's not his story. He's a person. Mm. He had a girlfriend. He was expecting a child. You know, all this kind of stuff. So... And it's a life cut short. It doesn't what he was involved in or not involved in, it's that has nothing to do with him being murdered by people that are supposed to keep us safe. Yeah, protect and serve. That's, that's your it. job. That's yeah. their job. Not execute, exactly. protect and serve. You know, and, and, and like you said, like, just because he was in a gang and all these idiots that are saying, oh, well, you'd live by the gun. That, that doesn't mean you you, you live less than. 
Do you get exactly. what I'm trying to say? So, so to that, to just to end on, on that segment, it's just like R.I.P. Chris Cabs. Absolutely. Chris Cabs, I think, sorry. Chris Cabs. Chris Cabs yeah. Chris Cabs is a producer in Ireland, for fuck's sake. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Chris Cab, Chris Cab, and um, hopefully your, your family gets justice and 100%. These, these scumbags get locked up. But yeah, we're going to get into it now. Um, this is a conversation about an industry that we both walked in. Mm-hmm. And me personally, because it's fresh, I won't. I probably won't say. Well, if you know me, you know. You know where I walk, <laughs> exactly, yeah? You, you know, know, you know, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Know. Like, but um, before I even get into it, like, mm-hmm. the, the, we're here to talk about the bookies, right? Yeah. And just raise some awareness and just talk about. I will touch on the, the, the nice side of it because there are there is nice side of it that has benefited me yes. in my life. Me too. But there is a very, very dark side and I feel like, like I said, this is if I speak and we're going to fucking speak and today and we're, we're going to be in big trouble today. But It's something that needs to be spoken about because I haven't seen anyone, anyone speak about it and it's just glossed over with fancy ads and um, bet offers and special prices and this, that and the other. But... Mm there's a side of it that you don't see unless mm. you're behind the counter. Mm. And that's what we need to get into because people need to realise what it's doing to people. Mm. It's, in my opinion, gambling is the worst disease that's out there because it turns people from the nicest person they could be to deceitful, lying, r- stealing, robbing, everything, like things that they would never have dreamed of, of, of doing before. And you see it with all the high-profile GAA players that came out. Like, there's a few. Um, Cahill McCarran wrote a book. I've read, I've read that book. Like, he, he, he sold himself in the gay porn industry in England for money. He, was, uh, he's a ty- he, abused, he plays football with Tyrone. He set up a fake charity skydive in aid of breast cancer. And gambled all the money. He stole from his dad's business. He was writing checks. He was taking loans out in other people's names. He was taking credit cards out in other people's names. Davy Glennon that used to play for Galway, he was the same. He got himself in. His mother remortgaged her house to pay off his debts. And these are people that we see playing in Crow Park and that you see on the telly and that you think that would never have these kind of issues. But... uh, it, that's for them but it's for the everyday people that we were seeing that's the that's the heartbreaking part of the job that we were involved in because you came in here earlier we were talking we were laughing we are chatting away but as soon as now we're in this bo- there's that smile again yeah but I can see a sharpness in your eyes that you really have a lot to get off your chest and I'm going to give you that platform to yeah. do that because like I said before, it is very important to have this conversation and obviously my platform is growing uh, yeah, rapidly and, and I want like, you know, I want them to feel, like I said, I, I keep saying on this podcast, yeah, when people are watching this from home, even what you've just said there, someone remortgaging their houses to pay off debts mm-hmm. and stuff like that, like it, it's, it's, it's mental and I want people to feel exactly. the emotions of what yeah. we're, we're about to say because it, it's it's dangerous what's going on and like, you know like we we spent a lot of time on twitter laughing about the job and the stuff you know the funny stuff and this that and the other but it's not all fun and games no, no. it's a dangerous job it's no. a dangerous job to be in it's a dangerous industry to be in and i find especially as a female mm. and like at the end, for a long period of time in that job, I was in a managerial position. Mm. And to have to gain respect in in this, like in 2020, you know, all them times that I was working, to gain respect from males, your colleagues, the, the customers in the shop, like people above you, it was like sometimes, and it wasn't just me saying, I could ask other females that I work with, and it's like, you're not respected because it's like, you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what you're talking about or this, that, and the other. And having to try reason with difficult customers, especially if they were good customers, big customers that were putting, that were keeping your shop open and everything else to go with that, trying to trying to reason with them when they think you're in the wrong and they're saying, oh, oh, you're a female, or oh, you're only a little girl, you're this, that, and the other. That's another part of it that I found for a long time it was very hard to, to deal with because you're trying to show authority to people, but you're also trying to try extra hard with your knowledge to show people, I can do this, and I can be a good manager. You know, that kind of thing. And that's probably what a lot of men in the industry wouldn't even have to 
think about. Mm. I'm gonna go back before we go forward, mm-hmm. right? So, talk to me about you know your early days. So you walked in. You said boil sports, mm-hmm. yeah. Boil sports. So yeah. your your early your earliest memories of, of walking okay. in there. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll 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 go first, yeah, because yeah, I'll, I'll let you go, yeah. yeah. So I remember first first day w- walking in, I was coming fresh. I was, I was in little at the start, and. Uh, it was completely different because I was I was doing like the morning pack, so I'd pack the bleeding bread and the milk and all that crap. So in there for six months. So like, fuck this, get me out of this place, you know? And and the one thing the bookies gave me, um, and I will say this in a good way, is like it gave me stability. Yeah, me too. Like it did give me, me stability. Oh, the other jobs I had, like I was working little was a ten hour contract, right, monthly pay. It was like oh nightmare. Sketchers, yeah, it was good at the start. Like I remember I, I always talk about this. Minimum wage is like what, ten something now? Ten, yeah. Back then, I remember it was the like 865 days. I remember <laughs> them days, yeah, slaving away for two hundred quid, going into town and all. I remember them days. You know what I mean? So, but when I went to, to you know, and that that was like a zero out, a zero hour contract. Zero, yeah. So I remember moving from St- um, Henry Street to the Square. Right. And obviously in Henry Street, it's, it's town. So mm. you have like farm people coming in. You have old people coming in. They're they're buying. Sketchers, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, but in Tala, when I moved me to Sketch, no one's wearing <laughs> no Sketchers. You know what I mean? No one's wearing Sketchers around here. It's, yeah. it's Air Max, it's a 95. Do you know what I mean? There. Memory foam, memory foam, no, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's none of that, you know what I mean? So, um, there, obviously, like you said, you said you touched on it earlier where you had to make money for the shop to bleed and stay open. So, mm-hmm. to get hours, the shop had to make money. Yeah, like, I remember, like, David, you were walking and bleeding. I was a cost from you, using full locker. She, Hey, they weren't busy either because obviously <laughs> trying to get runners out full like I was trying to get a little mortgage. mortgage. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you, I used to stand there looking across, looking at him. He's looking at me. We're just looking at each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? So, yeah. So there, and I remember like, I remember one time, this this was where like, I was like, I had to leave this job because I remember, I think, this is the truth. I remember getting paid. I think I, I walked like 15 hours that week or something, yeah? I remember getting 115 euro, right? I swear to God. Wouldn't get you a flight to London, yeah? No, I wouldn't. Right? So, 115 euro. And my sister was walking to McDonald's at the time. Mm-hmm. And she 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 brought home 750 euro or something like that. That's my younger... That's a serious pay, though, It is. It? I think I paid every two weeks, right? So, I'm just like, my younger sister, me with a kid, a baby, and a car to run. Yeah. My younger sister can't be earning more money than me. That, no, it's, this is, it's this not is the way it mental, works. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, I was like, I went to the manager, like, yeah, look, I'm leaving. Like, no mm-hmm. job behind me, no, I'm leaving. Fast forward now, I didn't have a job for a while, but then, obviously... Went to walk in the boogies and. And can I ask you a question before you go can, any further? Why, why did you, why did you decide I'm gonna go to the boogies? Was it because of sport and I, that I, kind of thing? Yeah, or? I never knew the culture of. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, as soon as I say what I'm gonna say to you, then it was like it was the start of a madness. Okay. Yeah, so. I had two lads, um, Shadow Connor Matney and uh, Adam Kelly. They were walking in the boogies, mm-hmm. and obviously the boys are always like you know. Walking and they were always out and doing stuff, so I was like, "You knew they had money." They knew that they had mm-hmm. money, so I said, "Right, get me, get me in, boys. Yeah, if you mm-hmm. can, because I'm struggling here. You know what I mean? Like, no yeah. job or whatever." Fast forward, now did the interview, and I, I, I used the boys' names. The manager liked me, hired me. Now we went to the first day in. I remember a customer coming up to me. I was sitting there, obviously I was training, so I was just capturing, yeah. And he came up to me, "Jesus, son, you have a lovely tan on you, don't you?" Oh, I, and. So, the goodie that I'm now, yeah, I I would have I would have lit that place up. You know what I mean? But it's just you obviously you're going in. I know it's a culture. You, you, I'm hearing that you have to be sharp. Like mm-hmm. It's money. People go mad at you. Customers mm-hmm. are horrible. So I was just re- I was real intimidated. But I'm not gonna lie, I yeah, was. Of course. And of I'm gonna talk nothing intimidates mm-hmm. me. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I was just like I was intimidated. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, that that's not. He shouldn't be saying that's what? not right. Don't I don't know you like that. Obviously your friend. Listen, white people do them jokes like, and we. Yeah. We, no matter what we say, boys and girls, we yeah, we let them. If we kill with someone, we we do let them jokes yeah. fly. But I don't know you. And he's like, yeah, it's a lovely time. That was the start. I was like, mm, this is different. And then I remember then a couple of days later, one of the managers was having a full on argument. I mean, chap ch- was foaming at the mouth, screaming at us, screaming at each other. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, what am I after walking into? Yeah. And at the time. My girlfriend at the time, I remember saying, I don't want to do this job because I, I don't want to be coming in here beefing every day, but we just moved out. So, so I had to, I to, had to, you, you know what I mean? I can't, there. I left Skechers, I left Little, it's like, no, you need to walk, you know what I mean? Like, and like I said, there. it was a 24 hour contract and it was stability and it was mm-hmm. going to be money coming in, you know? So that's kind of my introduction into the bookies. Yeah, um, my introduction was that a few of my friends were working in it and I had just started in, co- in college in Turles. And um, I I lived an hour away in, in a town called Bursacane, so I used to travel to 
college every day. I didn't live down there, so I used to come up and down every day. And a few of my friends were working in Boils. And then I seen they were advertising in Turles, and I was like, this is what I need now. Weekend work, I can go to college, work at the weekends. So I applied, did the interview, all that kind of stuff. Do you remember that quiz? Did you have to do a quiz? Like all the like general knowledge about sports, like like, no, we like who, is, who is Katie Walsh? Like no, um, we do that, no. name name three golf tournaments. Did it all of this, so I I passed anyway. I got through. That was grand, and I remember the first day. It was a Saturday. I'll never forget it. And there was I worked in Thurles, and there was a Ladbrokes, um, a Paddy Power, and two boiled sports. So there was one at this end of the town which I worked in, it was like the rough end of the town and then there was one up in the square where all the hustle and bustle. Our shop was small, their shop, there was like a big boils up there. Like, So um, I walked in and I remember I had to be there for like half eight because it was like you had to be there for half eight to open at nine and it was like the first 13 hour shift and I was like, this is mental, like going in, like learning to pop all the papers and doing all that kind of stuff. And I remember just feeling so out of my depth because it was it was so busy because like all the lads have been doing their soccer bets, you know, in the morning, that kind of stuff. And I was like, I don't know if I can. I, I felt the same as you. I was like, and they were all like, oh, new girl, is it? Mm. You know, this kind of thing. And I was like, oh, God. And like my manager at the time, he was real like timid and and shy and it it just didn't really bode well and like he obviously he obviously trained me but I, I it was either basically I had to sink or swim. It was either I was gonna learn. Oh yeah, the fuck into the deep exactly, end. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like there's yeah. no because when it got busy, it was only it wasn't like there was three of us working. There was only two of us. Mm. Bets had to be translated, like and he'd have to go in and correct my mistakes and all that kind of stuff and yeah, it just it just went from there, and obviously you go up through the ranks. So like, obviously we start. I started as cashier. I'm sure you did as yeah. well. And mm. it was just, it was it wasn't what it wasn't what I was expecting. Like my friends had obviously told me, but they're lads. Like so, they kind of just took it. They took it in their stride. So it was it was it it took a, a while to get used to. But then when I got into it, I couldn't see myself working anywhere else because I loved it. Mm. And mm. I just like we can we can talk about it as we go on, but like as you progress up the ranks, you know, things get better and stuff like that. But I was the same as you. I was like, this money in college, like I was coming out with like three hundred quid after working just the weekends, mm. like, and mm. then and then obviously I got more money hungry, so I'd start working on a Thursday after college, and then I'd have a Friday off, so I used to do a twelve hour shift Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and. I'd be sitting in work when it was quiet doing college work mm. like that's and that's one thing it, it literally kind of took over my life like I was basically working full time and doing college at the at the same time but it was like the money was so good that you you just you couldn't you couldn't turn it down mm, 100% and, and we're touching on a lot of positives and I like the way we're starting like that before we get into the heavy yeah. stuff but even some of the perks of working on the bookies is the tips yeah what Listen oh. to me, yeah, and I have no shame in in saying this, and because there's a lot of another thing that a lot of people do as well, especially in my community, is, is act as if they got it like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't come and like I, that. And I said it just to someone yesterday. He was like, "Oh, I was I was getting a, I got a few bottles yesterday." He's like, "Oh, don't go look at you." And I was like, "Bro, this is this is nothing, bro. This is like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the bar is very low right now." Mm -hmm. And I was just telling him about like you know in the future now because I'm like stories I'm about, I'm about to tell now mm -hmm. when. God blesses me and I'm good. Like when I'm flexing, I don't want people. Oh, look at him! He's we're broke. And he, no, when I was poor, and I was ten years. You start laughing. <laughs> exactly, now that exactly. bar is here, oh, don't go. No, don't give me that. No, that rubbish. Mm. Yeah. So I remember, you know, like I said, I just moved, just moved out mm -hmm. for the first time. My man, dad, not paying the bills. Bills are on me. Yeah. So they're struggling a bit. You know what I mean? Like all my ways, I have no savings. I have nothing. Exactly. So all my ways are going there. on the gaff, trying to get TV in. I don't even even got bought a TV, but he was bleeding little sisters one. But anyways, yeah. getting the fucking bed covered, like doing a bit by doing bit. Doing bit by bit. Mm -hmm. So you have no money going paycheck to work, right? Paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. Remember one day going in, I was like, how the fuck am I going to eat lunch today? I have no money for lunch. Mm -hmm. Starving already. Only had to walk in, right? And then, boom, someone won like 50 quid on a virtual or whatever. He was like, handing me five euro. There you go. I was like, what, for me? He was like, yeah. Like, I was like, 
Oh, shit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that used to help me a lot. You know, with leave cards yeah, and stuff course. like that, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? All, like, all them five euros. Yeah. Up, especially when you don't have two pennies to rub together. Bro, they, 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 that was a major thing. Like, even in my job now, we're not allowed to accept, you know, tips or anything. That could mm. seem like a, a bribe or whatever. But they, they, they were um, they were some some good memories. And, and, and like, you know, some things as well. Where I have the gift of the gab now, right? Because yeah, I used I'm, to be... I used to be a person that you know I had to know you to kind of talk to you. You know what I mean? Okay, like, yeah. I, I wouldn't you. be really chatty like that every. But and the thing with the bookies is like you see the same people every day. Yeah, Monday you, you build to relationships with yes. them. Like yes, as much you do. as you might want to kill them three days yeah. out of the week, the mm. other four mm. you're good. One hundred. So that got me like kind of out of my shell, oh, mm-hmm. my confidence. You know, and I was yeah. like, I was just like engage with people more. It really did improve my social skills. Because even right now, I can talk to anyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so they, they, were, they were some of the, the positives about, yeah. you know, and working I will always say to people, if you want a lesson in mm. customer service and how to work under pressure, work with dimwits, as in staff members and customers, mm. obnoxious assholes. Arrogance. Arrogance. Pigs. Like, I, can, I, 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 I have so many stories. I'm not even... We're getting, we're getting into it. We're, we're getting, getting into it. it. We're getting but into it. If you... Like, my... my As you said, my mm. social skills and my ability to deal with my clients now when I'm in the gym, work and whatever, mm. they are immaculate. Mm. Like... And I can, I, I cannot, like, I was always a chatterbox. Like, my, my, my parents would tell you that. Like, like, I would literally talk to the wall. I used to get thrown out of class, like, for talking. But working in there definitely did help because you've no choice. Mm. You have to interact with these people. No, 100%, and then, yeah. like, there's, there's crack banter. The racing is on. Like, you know, you get a tip for a horse. You'll run up to Paddy Powers. Do You know, all this kind of stuff. So you do build relationships with people. And then the people are just coming in, the owl lads coming in to read the paper and get the free tea and coffee and that. Mm. You know, mm. that kind of stuff. Oh, but stop. but mm. then you have the people your age that you end up being friends with. And, you know, their their betting habits and you like you'll help them out or whatever. You know, just what whatever they need, prices, this, that, and the other. Because, like, back before, we never had price screens. That wasn't really a thing. They only kind of came in. And um, so they'd be all, oh, what's the price for Bruce Dortmund versus whoever, or this, that, and the other. Or can you, get, can you ring and get me a price for Salah to score two goals and therefore to be three corners or whatever it was? And then when you see when they were seeing that you were willing to help them out or if there was a price wrong and they had a price down but the price had changed that you'd give them leeway of the price that they wanted you know they, like when you got to a certain stage they were things that you were able to do and they'd appreciate it then like especially at christmas like i used to be going home laden down at christmas with stuff bottles of wine chocolate money mm. everything christmas cards mm. like perfume Mm. all of this kind of stuff like and they were they were the amazing parts of it and like obviously like where i live in tipperary there's all different shops and we were expected to go and work in different shops depending on where needed cover so i wasn't just always in the one place so it was nice and then i say i started working in nina a lot which was only 15 minutes away from where i lived instead of an hour and like you get to know all the people in there and then you might go work there for a few days and then i'd go back to tarlis and then i'd come back to nina and people would be like oh neve you're back you know how are you getting on da, 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 da. and that's how that was one of the things i found hard when i was leaving was like leaving your customers because you're not going to see yes. them. And, and like yes and like, obviously i used to see them on the street and that like because then after that i worked in nina so i used to see them but mm. um i'd rarely go to turles because i had no reason to be down there so it was like if i did ever see any of them like it'd be like oh my god like i haven't seen you in so long you know that kind of thing so that was that that was a lot of the the positives like i have like i have so many like funny stories like that it's like you, th- there are things that you won't forget yeah, kind of yeah. thing, you know and just just on that like even a customer uh, I'll, I'll, I'll name his name because he, he wouldn't mind me giving him a shout out um this customer his name is james he's an old man i think he's like 87 or something mm. and he'd come in in the mornings and he just light up i just loved seeing him mm. like his his wife like has dementia and he, he'd just sit her down and he'd go and like he'd be like he called me buddy uh, right and he'd, so he'd get um 
he'd write down like he'd, he, so obviously his sight is shocking okay. he'd be in there with magnifying glass not looking <laughs> at the paper and stuff like yeah. yeah yeah you know what I mean and he's always he's always in a fresh suit hair always nice yeah. he'd come up and be like right can you put the prices on these for me and all I put the prices on him he'd let me know how his horses are doing and stuff and I, and I, and I, I miss that 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 kind of side mm-hmm. of you know like you said you build relationships some people who are nice to you you build relationships they'll come in in the morning do that bets and they'll go exactly, home exactly they'll see them tomorrow you get me mm-hmm. but we're gonna let's get into into the dark side and okay. I'll start off like this what were some of the the pet peeves that really rubbed you up the wrong way oh, in the bookies God. I'll give I'll give well, I'll give God, two examples go first, I'll go I'll give two examples so one of the things that used to really bug me so shop tidy okay yeah oh my fucking God Niv <laughs> I, 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 I would be outside, yeah, picking up dockets with my bare hands, and I'm just cursing these people in my head, cause it's like, right, you'll go into Tesco, you'll go into, I don't know, GameStop or Lifestyle Sports, mm. you're not fucking things on the ground. No, dude. you're not. It's the most. It's one of the most. Like I said, it's one of the most degrading Dis- jobs. Like, so you know what? Well, I remember before, yeah. I said this before, you know, uh, there's a footballer called Graham Bourke, plays for Shamrock Rovers. I know, yeah, yeah. I played, I don't think I played with Graham Bourke, I played, it, we're the same age group, mm-hmm. but I remember I was out doing a shop tidy, and he just signed for Preston, and I was looking up, I'm like, he's there playing professional football, something that I love, mm-hmm. something that I give my right arm to play ball, doing, yeah. and I'm here picking up dockets from these fucking idiots in this job, and like, there's, there's like, there's bins it, to your right, there's, there's, there's bins fucking everywhere. bins there, everywhere. bro. What is your just throw it in the Depends bin? Depends as well. Throw Depends. it in the bin. Mm-hmm. We're gonna sound like tail bleeding, you know, but no, we're not that saying the noise parts. Exactly, Let, exactly. We're gonna, you've here, got this the, yeah, this is you've the reason I brought Neil here, yeah? This is the reason exactly. fuck all that. <laughs> fuck that. Just right? remember, different, forget about that part of the conversation. Right? <laughs> so that's that's what I remember one time and I'm gonna kinda I'll tell you off camera because these you don't wanna be getting cancelled. Yeah. But I'm gonna kinda flip what I said, what I really said, right? But there was a there was an Asian man that was in there. And I remember walking with the lad, he was the manager, yeah, so I've just done a shop tidy and he's losing, like he's putting, you know, the big, Asians, yeah, they big, put big, big, money, big money, but he's yeah. losing his bollocks and he's like effing and blowing and throwing. I'm like, I'm like, Paddy, here, talk to him, like, you're the manager, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, oh no, I'll wait, I'll wait for one more, one more, <laughs> I had to throw about seven dogs on the floor, you fool, you had at one more, right? I go, say, hey, buddy. Stop throwing that on the, stop throwing the dockets on the floor. Just a bin right beside you. He goes, oh, fuck you. And this is the thing I liked about the bookies, right? This is the thing that he's laughing. This thing, this thing I, liked, I liked about well, the bookies, I don't, I don't you could give it back. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, I'm on the phone with the brokers and solicitors now. Yeah, and I'm giving out, looking for money for gaffs. And I'm like, mm. why is this not? I'm like, bro, it's not, I'm just not going to tell you to fuck off. But in the bookies, you could, right? You could, yeah, yeah you fuck could. Fuck you, yeah? I goes, fuck, fuck, fuck you, you're bleeding. <laughs> yeah, what did I call him? Oh, fuck fuck, I'll say I don't give a shit. Okay. I go, shut your mouth. Fuck up, you lesbian, right? Because, <laughs> do you know what? He, no, he, he, he had a fucking leather jacket, bleeding fucking trousers that he's showing his ankles, hooped earring, and I'll shut your fucking mouth, you lesbian, I said to him, yeah? You fool, yeah? He's like, fuck you, I go, fuck you, we're going fuck you for about two minutes, and he's trying to fuck you. I'm just like, fucking hell, throw it in the bin, or you're getting out, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not even the manager, yeah. I'm a cashier, the one vexed, right? Second story. Second story. You know, I'm, um, you're not, you're, so we used to, in the square anyways, right, we used to, it will be two of us walking, mm-hmm. yeah? But obviously one would go on that lunch. Mm. Now, when I forced that, I used to hate the other person, because I still didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, it took course. me a while to get into it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So what I used to hate was, when you're on your own, people are doing virtuals, people are doing roulette, mm-hmm. people are doing bingos, mm-hmm. and they're running up, and they're all like this. Yeah. <laughs> get mine on, get mine on, get mine like on. Like, you're a fucking DJ. Look, they're like this, right? Uh, exactly. Get mine on. And then he's saying, get mine on. Yeah. I'm on and, then, f- and then you have the big fella that's putting 200 euro each way on a favourite right at the back and the, the race is about to go off the horses. But you have these Egypts putting fucking a euro on red or Oh, <laughs> see them man there? Broski. You have no money. Fuck off. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're living in your man's box room and you're putting a euro on red or black. Nave, let me tell you something. I'm going to let you go in. Let me tell you this, yeah? On me man's life. And people at work, we know who I'm talking about as well, right? There was a fella that used to come in and do 20 cent bets, 50 cent bets, one euro bets, Nave, yeah? Go away. So we used to, what, what was the thing? You, you know when you, um, someone bets mad big, you have to send it to... Um, trading. Trading, okay? So we, I used to buzz off, some of my colleagues were like, oh, we're starting <laughs> out the trading now, fella. He's coming in with the big books, you know what I mean? He's coming in, putting on 20 cent. Nave, you get me a 20 euro, no, I put on a 20 cent bet. Go away. My ma's life, I may never see my ma again. 
Oh, I looked at I looked at my colleague. I was like, I'm, I'm going home. Not like, even I was like, Ian change what? Like, broski, you have no money. Fuck off. But there was one day though. You went, I think he owed some more money or. He, someone said, if you don't get me money, you're going to die. He came in and he was throwing 50s on. This oh, he fun. actually did have bro, money. Bro, he was throwing 50s. Was like, brown envelope he brought in and all. I was thinking, what's going on? He, he, always, he was after pinching someone's pocket. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so they, they were two of my biggest ones. It was the customers running up and get that on, get that on. Well, he wants on, like, and you're on your own as well. Yeah. And then, and then, especially in the, the, first, the first couple of months, it was really difficult yeah. mm. because. The ones that are trying to do you know exactly when you're going to be on your own. Mm. And that's one thing I can say. That was one of the worst things about it. Like we worked, my I never used to finish at six o'clock ever. I'll say it at hand on heart. I worked half nine to half nine. If I was working, I was there all day. Uh, we'll, get, we'll, get that. That. we'll get into that. We'll get into that as well. We'll get into that. Like it was crazy. But I, I can honestly say, I'd say three times out of the whole five years I worked in the bookies, I took a full hour lunch break. I used to sit and work and eat at the same time. We all did it. Neve. We all what? did it. But I, I, do you know what? I don't know because that's just the way the culture was. I used to be sitting, eating food and taking bets at the same time. I, I, I could. Do you know what? It, I'd snack at the desk. Like, mm. you know, you'd have, like, you go shop or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you, you want that and you want that. And you'll get, like, you know, a pack Crisp of crepes drink, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I w- I'm telling you this now. What I used to do on my lunch, I'd go, I'd take me hour. Because you needed an hour because mm-hmm. walking there. Sometimes even with us, because doing a 12-hour shift, you can have an hour and a half. You know what I mean? And yeah. I take the hour and a half and sit there, put on my um, my podcast or yeah, whatever I'm watching. Just to, for, just to, just to, just to unwind. Yeah, because like I said, even my, my shop, like I walked in some busy shops, but when I was based in, in the square, that's very quiet, you get me? Okay. So yeah. we're probably not as busy, but no, I took my lunch. Fuck that, because it's stressful, man. Yeah, it is. And you're dealing and with that's, shit. That's mental. Like, that, not that's, a break. One, that's one thing I regret working there is I never, because I, ta- I was getting an hour taken off me. Mm. That's all we got yeah, was an hour. Yeah. I was, we were getting it taken. Like, obviously, if it was really quiet or whatever, then I'd go, like, go get food, go shop, whatever. Like, but I definitely, I definitely never, ever, mm. bar two or three times, took a full hour and actually left the shop for an hour mm. because you'd always especially when I got to deputy manager and manager it was like you'd be afraid something would happen mm. and you'd have you'd come back and the shit would be after hitting the fan and it's like then you're getting phone calls from your regional manager or you're getting phone calls from trading going what's this mm. why was this bet laid why was this person allowed state this much and that's always something I think that I was conscious of especially when I got to the the higher the higher heights of the job you know mm. so Let's get into it now, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, talk to me about some of the abuse you oh, and your other colleagues would God, receive. So, talk to God. me about like some of the worst things that would happen. So, right. build it up with like mm-hmm. what would go wrong in the customer's eyes, what would go wrong, and then their reaction to okay, so whatever you would, you'd say to them. Um, some of the some of the customers, especially you know, you have monitor customers. Yeah, you had the big boys, the yeah. big big women, mostly big boys though. Mm. Um, uh, they would be doing different sports accumulators. I had a customer in Tarlis, Jason. He owned the Chinese across the road. Mm. Um, he used to spend twenty k plus a week. <laughs> he came in. He used to have wads of cash. 500 notes, 200 euro notes, 100 euro notes, 50s. And you know what he used to do? Every time he was putting on a bet. Like he's in a strip club. Like in a strip club. Mm. And he was a lovely person. But when he was losing his bollocks, you were going to know about it. And you'd get called this, that and the other. And for a long time I took it because of how much he used to put into the shop. But then I just got sick of it. And I was like, Jason, I'm a woman. I'm a person. But I'm a woman. You cannot speak to me. Just because you're losing your bollocks, it's not my problem. I'm just laying your bets. I said, it's not my problem that that your team in fucking Singapore women's isn't working out. Or the handball team or the handball match that you're after betting on hasn't gone right. Like, it's not, that's not my issue, you know. So there was a lot of that, like, and there was a lot of... um, people putting down wrong prices or uh, they, and that I think I think that was the biggest source of conflict because they knew well what they were doing and they knew that they, depending on what type of customer they were that they'd be given the benefit of the doubt or they'd be given the, the, the leeway to get the price that they wanted and that used to boil me because I was so like no you're not getting it 
Like I'd give in sometimes, but then they'd be like, ring. And I'd be like, no, I'm not ringing. I'm manager. See who's sitting here in this seat over here on the left-hand side? You know I'm managing the shop. But then it would get to a stage that I'd have to ring and they'd say yes. I'd look like a fool then. Because they, they, they like, my regional manager used to say yes to ridiculous stuff. And I'd be like, you're just making us look bad now. Because it was complete... A complete. Sometimes it would be our fault. Some I've I've made mistakes. Mm-hmm. I've I've had tills down a hundred euro because I've never took I've never took money for bets out of a payout. I've done I've done all that. Like that's normal. Just on that, yeah. Just on the bets out of a payout. That used to because you're gonna make mistakes, especially if you don't have your multi on. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of book, bookie talk yeah, here, but, uh, but, but it. it's like so people pay bets out of bets. So say for instance they. They've that they're, they're, they're winning a hundred euro. It hasn't come in yet. They'll they'll put on. All right, put that on for me. Take it out of that bet. Yeah. And you could you you could you forget. Could forget. Obviously, mm-hmm. then you you don't till checks at the end of the day yeah. and sh- being short and all that blah blah. So that that's what you're touching on. You're yeah, making mistakes. So and we do make mistakes even on the on the job as well. Myself, I've probably lost the job hundreds of euro. Yeah, but no, even, I have as well. 100%. You, you, you you've, you've touched on. Um, and I'll just say this real quick. Yeah, the twelve hour shifts. I think that was ridiculous. I don't think, especially in the industry that that we were in, it's like. Why are you open for so long? Yeah, exactly. It was the only job in retail that was open till yeah, half, nine, nine, half nine. nine. Why? And seven on a Sunday. We were six on a Sunday. Like, we can't we go to, yeah. I, I used to think in my head, have you no home to go to? Have you no yard? Like, is there nowhere that you can put your head down? Why are you in here for as long as I'm here and I'm getting paid and you're not? And you're sitting here eating up all my biscuits... That I didn't pay for, but, they're, but they're, I went to the shop and bought them biscuits. Yeah. And you're sitting here drinking all the hot chocolate and coffee that you want. Yeah. Like I know there's no calories in free food. I get that. Like you mm. know, whatever. But like some of them were just taking the piss. Mm. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story, and I want I want you to just, just some of the abuse that you'll get in the bookies, right? Take one. So I remember one time there was a fella. He's he's doing fivers bet, but it's adding up. Fivers add up. You know what I mean? Oh so yeah, it's probably like, probably one fifty. 180 down or something, he's gone mad and he was late for a bet. So, when you're late for a bet, lads that don't know, you only get your state. So, if you put a forever bet on, you're getting that forever back. So, yeah. he thought he was so virtuals with virtuals, like you, when you, you get no leeway with virtuals. Yeah, once it counts down, mm-hmm. you don't get leeway, like you're saying, no. right? He was like, nah, nah, I watched the girl down. No, and we're on the system I, now. Before you go, yeah, any no, further, go, on, go I will let you in on a secret in boils for a horse racing, it's 15 seconds after the off. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy that one. Just remember that, okay? So don't bet with Boiler. Yeah, uh, th- th- this is a funny story. Well, I don't know. It's funny cool. to me, anyways. So he's going mad. He's shouting and he's giving out, right? And I go see a man. He was shouting out one of the other managers, mm-hmm. and I, I used to always like because a couple of stories I tell you as as for women, like yeah. you know, I felt like I don't know. I, I used to let the girls handle themselves. I'm not mm-hmm. like oh, mm-hmm. you need to me to protect, but mm-hmm. it's just a protector in me yeah, being a father course. to a girl. Yeah. Older brother and having a girlfriend yeah. and having women as my friends or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, I used to always protect the girls, like you know. So he's going mad at one of the girls. He is shouting. I goes, "Hey, I may calm down. Look, I'm looking at her. Like you know, mm-hmm. I, went, I went to the bed. You wear like, so, hey, you shut your mouth. I was like, ah, quiet, you, you get up earlier. No, I'm, 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 I'm popping them now. Like, yeah. Get up earlier. So in 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 um, where I was walking at the square, we didn't have a screen thing. Right, we, I don't know why no, we didn't we, have we, one. We didn't have the Did minor, never. No, no, we didn't have a screen thing, yeah. And you'll see why that um, when I tell you a story. Yeah, I think I know which one you're gonna tell me. Don't you tell me on Twitter, right? So we didn't have a screen thing, yeah. So, so he's going mad or whatever, and he's like, uh, and I was like, ah, as he's shouting, he's like, ah, look, you're not getting paid, mate. I'm on my phone like this, I'm missing. Yeah, like, ah, you're not getting paid, mate. Yeah, go on, go on, keep shouting. You're not gonna, still not getting paid. You shouting here, you're wasting your time. I'm poking, exactly. poking, poking. He's like, Aah! he's walking towards the door now, right? He's like. Aah! I'm not racist, but you're gonna make me say it. <laughs> right, I swear, I swear. Oh my hand God. on my heart, on the Bible, yeah? Dave, where's the Bible, bro? I swear to God. Hand on my heart, on the, bo- on the Bible. Oh I'm not messing, my right? Oh, God. So, he's like, oh, you're gonna make me say it. And was he white? White, yeah. Why is this bleeding table? He's white, yeah, right? So, he's gone. He's like, here's me on my phone. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm lovely. I have him, right? He's like, yeah, go on. Go on, go on, say it, say it. So, do you know what, right? So, look me forehead, size me forehead. He's a big target. All I see is that wadush, <laughs> clunk. He threw a pen at me, scoop in the head. <laughs> And right. I ran out of the shop. He ran out of the shop. <laughs> I said, yeah, lovely. My colleagues were, there was one of them that was crying. She was laughing at her because you could hear it. You could hear the clunk. Like, you could hear the clunk. It's all the way. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was like, that was just some of the abuse. And then like, I remember before, um, 
one of my colleagues were walking and yeah man he was very, like it, it's always you know what it's heartbreaking it's always the elfless to have children or granddaughter where he's really yeah. going mad mm -hmm. and he called my colleague like i was letting her deal with it because she can handle herself yeah, yeah. i was letting her deal with it and uh he, he called my co uh, call her a bitch right so after he it, 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 it woke me up there yeah. i was like what? what i was like whoa, whoa, whoa wait don't talk to her like that he, he, I was like, no, he's like, no, he's like, he's like, what? He's like, what are you gonna do? I said, shut your mouth. Don't talk to her like that. Like, she's a, she's a, the woman, like, respect mm. her. Like, you have, mm. you probably have granddaughters or whatever. Don't talk to her like that. And I, he's like, going, man. I was like, he's not getting tickled. Like, he's not getting cheeky. I, now, listen, I, I probably overreacted here, mm. but it's just the, the anger in me because he spoke to her like that. Because obviously, you're with, you're with these people every day, yeah, 10 exactly. hours a day. They become so like your family. It's like your family. And this one, I looked at her like family, you know what I mean? Like, and you, you sit there, you have deep talks, blah, blah. So I felt like it was my duty to defend her. Mm. So I, stood up, I was like, Get the fuck out of the software, I dragged you by the scruff. I said, get, get, get out. Mm -hmm. He was going mad, he was going mad. I wasn't going mad at him. I was squaring up to him when I listened to the old man. <laughs> I'm going mad, right? I said, and then she goes, Goody, walk out, walk yeah, out, yeah. leave it. Mm -hmm. So I had to walk out. And uh, she's like, oh, when I came back, she's like, oh, he's like, making a phone call there. I goes, no, butter. I'm here till they six. They ring customer no, butter. service. No, no, not, not customer service. I'm ringing people for me. I was oh. like, the amount, of the amount of scraps that I got in, like, knocks. Or I'm telling people, yeah, I'm here till six. I'll wait for you. <laughs> no, fly out. No, step I don't outside. care. No, step outside. Yeah. No, butter. No, butter. Like, so. Just because you worked there, you, they don't think that you're going you to step to them. Six like. o'clock came. No one came. Yeah, of course they don't. Another one, right? I remember being walking in Kilnard. No, let me talk about that shop. <laughs> right? Some fella was going mad, he, he wasn't getting paid. He like he, he said he should have got 50 quid more or whatever. And I was like, no, you're not. Like you were late for that price, blah, blah. He's going mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, watch. See you. See you. My son's will be down later. I said, no, but I'm here till whatever mm -hmm. time. So I said, obviously, it's 3v1. You're not right. going to win. No, you're not, I'm not thick. Mm -hmm. So I rang one guy. N1, come here. What's the gig, bro? Where are you? Oh, I'm down here. What's going on? I was like, yeah. There could be a scrap here later on. He's like, yeah, no, but I'll be down now. Do you get me? Just, mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. So just patting on like that. So it's like, you're, you're going in in a job where you're getting threatened and all. You're trying to make money for your your family and you're getting exactly, threatened. Yeah. So just talk to me about some of the, like, give me a story about like the time where you were severely abused, where you were like, what the fuck? Oh, okay, right. Um, This was when I was working in Thurless. I was deputy manager at the time. I think it was a Sunday. And there was this crackhead... Adrian, if you ever get access... <laughs> oh, I love the way you're saying names. <laughs> if you ever get access to the internet to watch this, go and fuck yourself, okay? Remember that, right? <laughs> so it was a Sunday, and we used to open on our own. The second person didn't come in until like half 11 or whatever. Cool, mm. calm. I was just after opening the shop. Mm. Here he was, outside the door, locked. I was like, right, cool. I had to deal with this fella all the time. Like him and his 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 wife was literally the nicest person in the world, and he was like, "Oh, I'm not even getting into it." But anyway, he came in. He was like, "Oh, Neve, da 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 da, like shouting and more." I was like, "Adrian, get out!" I was like, "I'm not listening to you at this hour of the morning." And he was like, "Oh, do you know what? I've always meant to say this to you. Do you know that you're a fucking bitch?" Yeah. And I said, "Yeah, but I said, you see the way I run this shop. I have that's." People like you are the reason why I am the way I am. Mm. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, well, do you know what? You, something's going to happen to you one of these days yeah. and you're, go you're mm. going to realise that mm. that big mouth of yours is going to get you in trouble. Mm. I was like, yeah, I was like, Adrian, you have two choices. You either leave the shop now or I'm going to ring the guards because I am, I'm not doing this. I was like, I have this at least once a week. And... <clears throat> I had asked him to leave because obviously he had a can of cider in his hand. Like he was drinking, he was drunk. He was yeah, obviously this out is what you told me on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, same as um, Goody just said, I may have had a can of um, cider flying towards me over the counter and it landed all over me. And I had to sit there until the second person came in and I could go and buy a new uniform because they wouldn't let me go home. The whole can of cider over me, and I, like you know, boys' uniforms back then. It was a white blouse, and like I was drenched in cider from from head to toe. Like, do do you do you think the bookies do enough no. to sec like security wise for their staff? They no, don't, don't you know? No. And and, and do you know and what I knew as well? What you were going to say before you even said it? Yeah. Because no way. Yeah. We didn't even have screens. We didn't you, even have screens. Yeah. We we Our, got. Our on, counter, sorry. our counter was like this high. Mm, mm. Like I'm small, obviously you can see that. Like I could see over our counter. Mm. So if, like we had, we had, we had a robbery. Like I, I was working in a shop that got robbed, but it wasn't that shop. But like it would have been very easy, very very easy. Like the even even the way the safes were and all that kind of stuff. It was all so old school. Obviously I don't know what the way it is now because I haven't worked in it for a few years. But I know. 
I'll never forget, I came to Dublin for deputy manager training before I, I passed the exams and all that, and I'd go to Dorset Street mm. and the shop in there. The thing was like a bank. Like all the screens, there was bars on the window. I was like, what is this? Mm. Like they had so much security. Like their whole thing was boxed in like... Like they like, and they had a door and everything. We had like a wooden, a wooden like half door that used to come into the back of the counter that you could see over. That's all. Mm. But then when I came to Dublin, I was like, wow, because we that we were training in the shop upstairs in Dorset Street, and I was like, wow, like, and like the the screens were like bulletproof and all that, and I was like, this is mental. And then I realized that they do do secure security for some shops obviously because of where they are or whatever but we definitely could have done with them at some stages because there was another time I was working in in Nina when that was my regular shop I moved from Turles to to Nina and um there was this man he's like known around the town like as a, as a madman and um he thought I called him a paedophile or something. Like, I didn't say anything like that. He reached over the counter and grabbed me by the shoulders and went to pull me over the counter. And only the lads, like, my regulars were there. He w- he probably would have tried to choke me. Like, he reached over, grabbed me by the shoulders and lifted me out of my chair. Like, like this man is, like, six foot four, probably 16, 17 stone. That was one of the scariest experiences. I've, fo- I've been followed after work as well, but that was probably the scariest experience I had. And I pressed the panic button. Do you think the guards came? No. That's the, that's, that used to piss me off. One of the, he'll watch this as well. He'll watch this because he watches me. Yeah, he's left as well. And, like, you know, I remember one time a girl was getting abused to bits and she'll watch as well. And because uh, they know they know I'm having mm-hmm. this conversation, mm-hmm. and um, he was like, "Did you press your staff guard? What's me pressing my panic button gonna do for me exactly. in that right lawyer situation yeah. where someone has me by the neck? Mm-hmm. Press the staff guard? Like, are you fucking serious? Yeah, I want to save my life. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, because mm-hmm. that thing comes on. Oh, do you need any help, Broski? <laughs> I need help. So, so that's I what need I think. Help I, I think and, and, and here's where I'm going with this. Yeah, I think there should be. Round clock, especially okay, not not very round clock, but from six because your clothes are fucking half nine, yeah. Yeah, there should be security yeah, because 100%. another thing that, that the bookies do, which is fucking sick, and this we talk about the dark side of it, mm-hmm. they plant pubs right, b- right, right beside, beside mm-hmm. bookies, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I used to, like I said, I, I, thought, I touched on killing Arden, and it was very, uh, and like I said. Why? Why I? Uh, my mental is so strong these days because I have children, and at yeah. the time I only had one that I was looking after, and it was like, I have to go in here and to look after you. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's the only reason I kept walking there for so long. Yeah. Maybe do you know what it is as well? Because I love football so much, like Neve, I watch every game. Okay. Every oh, game. You're and fanatic. I, I, like... I, I'm one of, no proper. Like okay. I, I watch like yesterday. I was watching um, Milan versus Juventus. Like I watch every uh, yeah, game. Bundesliga, you know what I mean? The misses like... doesn't. Don't really touch on Bundesliga. At the same time, I, I more watch the Serie A because okay. yeah. they they're on the same. They're yeah, better yeah. games. Bundesliga, you know who? <laughs> yeah, fuck exactly. Yeah. Fuck, fuck that league. Yeah. But um. So I never really missed football. So that's kind of what kept me there for a long mm-hmm. time, you know. But there was just moments where I was going to give up. But I couldn't give up just because of my, my daughter. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, of course. course. I, I, I remember, um, you know, I remember a time where, and this is, this is staff now, yeah? Mm-hmm. I remember a fella came in with, with Coke, right? And so some, some of the uh, customers used to do Coke in the, in the there was a toilet in this, in this Yeah, in this, that was the normal shop, yeah? for us as well. Yeah, just going mm-hmm. and doing Coke and stuff, mm-hmm. yeah? But then I remember... He walked up to a staff member. He was like, I, 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 "I have an NCT here. Yeah, do you want to?" So I knew what he meant by yeah, NCT. Of course, a course, tester. Yeah. And then he tried. I was like, "Yeah, yeah." So staff member now went to the back, and I was, I'm thinking, "This is where I'm walking to." There's <laughs> to customers feed your kids. The, to get me. Yeah. And in that shop, like the young fellas now, they used to hang around there. There's a centre down there, right? And the young fellas that hang around there. Go into the chip or come in, sit down like it was a social club. Yeah, yeah. Throwing chips at each other, fucking pens. Like it was, it was bedlam in there. Yeah. But like, but you can't really go out there and say this and that because, like, there's loads of them and like. There's only one of you. One of you, and then you have to go home from there now exactly, as well. Standing yeah. waiting for, I'm just like, they, they know who you are. Did you get me? And then, and, and then back to the pub, there was like, there's man in there getting pissed from because people used to drink. I used to, I used to look. I was like. Where are you was getting the money to do this Monday to Sunday? Exactly. Do you know how expensive it is to be drinking exactly. and betting? Exactly. Exactly. And they used to, they'd, they'd bet even more as the day went on, as the more they drank. 
and they couldn't even write they couldn't even see you'd have people that would only ever bet on like horses or whatever are in betting on greyhound racing in fucking doncaster or wherever it was at nine o'clock and they've been out drinking all day they they're not going to remember they spent this money and then they come in the next day and they're like what was i in here last night yeah you were, and you put 20 euro on trap six that was seven to one, like he was never going to win. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was, it was nuts, like crazy. People putting 50 euro mm. on, on roulette and all this kind of stuff just because they've had a sniff or they've had a few drinks or whatever. Like, it, it's, it's mental. Yeah, and uh, some of the, let, let, let's touch on even on, on some of the money that's spent in there. Oh, the, God, right? yeah. And uh, I'd be like, first of all, like, where, where are you people getting all this money from? You know, to be, like, I remember. People coming in, putting 500 euro mm -hmm. before AML came in. Yeah. You probably left when AML I, came I, in. I wasn't there when AML was. Yeah, I know so what AML's anti-money laundering, that came yeah. in. So that, that was even a problem as well because... That was, but I, I, I will say it now, there, there was definitely, there definitely is and probably still is money laundering going on through bookies. It's too easy. Mm. No, 100%. Too easy. Oh, no, 100%. They'll, they'll figure out a new way. Because obviously if you bet um, 200 euro, it has to get sent to trade. Oh, it is to, it now? Yeah, it has to get sent to oh. trade. It has to get sent to training. Okay. Like, oh, no, not even trade, you have to monitor it. But if they, if a customer wins over two grand, they have to come in with IDs and blah. Oh wait, blah, blah. is that the way it is? So now? I'll, I'll tell you this. Yes, yeah, so we'll get into this. Yes, yeah, so I remember and the person who it was gonna watch, she's gonna know what I'm talking about. So one day she's explaining to someone that he won over two grand. He's after mm -hmm. being in the pub drinking. He's fuming because she's not paying him out. Right. She's telling him he has to bring an ID, proof of address, mm -hmm. this and that. So I'm out doing a shop tidy and Kilnarden is an absolute fucking kid. Like I said, you're, you're not just cleaning fucking, you're not just cleaning bleeding like dockets. dockets. You're cleaning, you're picking up chippers, you're picking up bleeding tissues, everything, yeah. oh, all sorts, disgusting, right? Disgusting, yeah. Disgusting, so degrading. So there's, there's more going on up there at the counter and she's like, I can't pay you out. You have to bring in this, that and that. It's the law. She just yeah. kept saying it's the law. Yeah. She's not elaborating why well, I'm not getting why, paid. Yeah, exactly. And so I, so I went over to the, um, there's a brochure over there that has explained right, what okay. AML is and why this, that and that yeah, and the rules. Yeah. So I bring it, I'm over here like a bleeding boy scout going up trying to explain <laughs> to the customer, yeah? This is why you're not getting mm -hmm. paid. So I go, sorry, yeah, she's right. It's the law. Da, da, da. And he go, he's, the customer just goes, not even looking at me, still looking at the counter. I goes, shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I was like, Shit, I was like, no, but mate, he goes, eh, shh, he, he turned around and goes, shh. I was like, uh -uh. shit, then. <laughs> I was like, do you know, what? like, that's some of the, I'm actually over here trying to explain to you, because she's not elaborating her point. She's you not giving you the, the full content. Do you, you not have to with, shush someone, what? like. Okay, do, you, do you know this, what? This, <laughs> this, this, do you know what bro. you should have done? You should, uh, you should have boxed him in his mouth. Neve, it couldn't, it's, it's just, I couldn't believe that happened. It's just, it's just, it, shh. Just stand out like that. <laughs> Talk to the hand because the face ain't listening. Do you remember that? He's, he's dying. Jo so I was just like, wow. Oh my God. I was like, that, I hate it. What did you do? What can I, I went back to Tidy. I went back to Tidy. There was one of them things. You ever seen that, like, what are you get? This is a conversation between A and B. See yourself. It was one of them kind of things. It, does, it was like the audacity. Do you get me? Yeah. So he eventually walked out. That was just like, I was like, nah, so some, of the, some of the stuff that happened to me in, in the bookies, it, it, oh, and you know it's, absolutely, it's absolutely crazy, man. And do you know you crazy? what? When I, was, when I was deputy manager in Thurlis, my manager, who was my very good friend, now shout out Mark Fannin, um, he's... Uh, doing commentary and greyhound racing and all that now he's trying to get out with bottles that don't play me but um his friend i'm not going to name the name because i'll probably have guards knocking at my door but it was a guard and he was the biggest crook that i've ever come across he was the worst customer i ever had to deal with he was the snakiest he was the most bad mind he was always trying to do us always and he had no shame in doing it and because of who he was and what money he was putting through the shop he always used to get his own way mm. and it used to boil my blood mm. because you know that smirk that they have it's like i i know i have you here mm. and like i used to fight with him all the time like and it just got me nowhere and i just felt like why am i here as a manager mm. if the people above me are going against me all the time because of who he is and I was like, you're a guard. Mm. You're supposed to be one of the good ones. Mm. And he was, ah, like, listen. He, he was one of the worst ones. That's I another, ever. don't worry, that, that <laughs> guard is shit in the corner. That's another, don't worry. We're going we're gonna to have a conversation about you as well one of the days. Fools, man. We're coming for you. But go on, yeah. But like, and he was just so horrible. He was so horrible. Like, especially like the way he used to treat Mark and the way he used to treat me were two totally different things. Like, like he wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. Mm. But he, he'd, he'd do whatever he 
for Mark. Mm. If Mark had this wrong or that wrong, he'd sort it out. But mm. if I had an issue, didn't matter. Mm. Did he just he just didn't care. Mm. And like I was younger back then, and <clears throat> I um and if you ask any of my customers, they'll say I'm mouty. They probably say I was a bitch because I was sometimes because mm. you know how hard the job was. Mm-hmm. And as I said at the it start, made you like that. Yeah, of it course. did make you like that. Yeah, but mm. as I said at the start, like as a female trying to prove yourself, especially in managerial positions in a male dominated industry, is very very hard. Very hard. One, one thing I want to ask you, right? Mm. So a lot, this happened to a lot of girls as well. Um, what were men like to you in the sense of like flirting and stuff? Oh and, god, yeah. A lot, some of the girl, I remember even this is mad, right? So there was a girl in my job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna say her name, but I don't want to bait her out like that. But she's a young girl, mm-hmm. but <laughs> so obviously she's a lesbian, yeah. Like full on running this boy and half of half, I was fly out, yeah. Um. So we were having a conversation. So I was just like, you know, you know, these days you can't really touch on that LGBTQ yeah, plus yeah, yeah. all the bleeding mm-hmm. alphabet, mm-hmm. yeah. So I was just having a conversation, just talking to her yeah, about yeah. like certain things that I, I want to know about, you know? Yeah, of course. So, but uh, another customer <laughs> who was also a lesbian, she overheard the conversation, mm-hmm. but she she was walk, she goes in there with a fella that she walks with. So he came up and he was like, oh yeah, she, she sent me over with this. And she wrote on the docket, you're a cutie. Text me. Left her number. Now this girl's eighteen. This woman's like twenty seven. Oh wow! Right? And she she was freaked out. But I know she. Of course I was, she was. I was like I was like, if a gal if a gal did it to you, I I I'd be like no. I'd be like, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You be talking about it. No, it's a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she she was Especially freaked she out was by older. that. She was freaked out by yeah, that. Yeah, of course. But, and, eighteen and, and, years of and, age. And this woman she did it to her another colleague of mine who was my age, like twenty nine. Oh, um, I'd like to take you out for dinner sometime. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I've. And, she, and no, she she's not like she's like straight, and she was very uncomfortable. Like, mm-hmm. and like I said, we we, and we'll touch on this as well. This girl would single man like she. I'd go home at yeah, six, yeah, yeah. and like she'd be had to like, and they used to come I in, used in to around do six. It, yeah, um, they'd come in around mm-hmm. six, you know, and they they'd be uh, there till close. Yeah, and she sat there very uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I, I you did know. That so so, so talk to me about some of that, like, like with men yeah, trying to like 100%. move to you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Like obviously, um, like you'd have. You'd have like lads like flirting with you or whatever. I've had a few with the slip the docket over the counter with your with their their number on it. I've had them message me like on Facebook or Instagram, mm. but like for the majority of the time that I worked in the bookies, I was in um, a relationship, so it didn't really matter. But there was a lot of, especially when they got drunk. Like I've had a lot of like sexual stuff said to me. I've been flashed. Like in work, I've. Why like, you guys? You guys yeah. chatting now? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh. it's not even funny. It's not even funny. Like, but Lord um, mercy. yeah, I've like been out on a shop tidy and like had hands put on me. Um, thinking like grab your arse, whatever. Like men, it was just they just violated like, and there's only so much you can say. But it's just like it's like you kind of just get used. Wait, to sorry. It let me let, let, let me pause you there, right? So this is what I'm saying about protecting. You know, because they're all about all these jobs. It's all about the customer, customer, customer. Yeah, it and is. And what I used to say, like, okay, what about the fucking staff? They didn't give a shit about the their abuse, staff. The, mm-hmm. the the vitriol, the the like you said, because I'll never experience that of being, you know, as a, as a woman, like, you know, that vulnerability mm-hmm. of someone just touched me mm-hmm. without my permission. Yeah, I'm not saying like that. So would you report this and what was said when you I did, did report? I did at the start, but then there'd be nothing, there, there'd be nothing done about so just it. Just get on with the kind of thing. Get on with it. And then if you're uncomfortable to do a shop tidy because this is happening, these bastards from yeah, head office will come in. They'd be like, why is mm-hmm. the shop not clean? Well, someone mm-hmm. bleeding. I can't even go and, exactly. you know what I mean, put something in the bin without getting right. me Yeah, I bend over to take someone rubbed. else and someone, I mean? someone standing behind me. Because it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, uh, like I said, yeah, especially, okay, so you said you would single man, yeah? Mm-hmm. Was that your choice or was that the, uh, the choice of the job? Yeah, well, it was it was my choice sometimes. So I a would single, do man, it. single man means like, like walking on your you're own. You're working on your like own, you're, you're, you're closing up the shop on your mm. own, everything. Like I did that a lot because the hours weren't there and I was I was the manager. So uh, like I well, actually, no, I was acting manager for a couple of months because the manager of the shop was was gone thinking that he was John Boyle II, you know who you were. Um and he left me running the shop. So a lot of the time then, um, 
I try to give people m- more hours so like I would work on my own then not to have two of us there until half nine you know especially like during the week because it was quiet and stuff but like weekends I would always kind of make sure that there was that there was two there mm. because it could get a bit sticky like mm. we're, we're single man and I'm, I'm gonna close the segment in two seconds so mm-hmm. I have two other segments to go into mm-hmm. before we close but which I remember before people calling in sick and all that, they wouldn't have staff to cover. No. You know? Do you ever work a 12 hour shift? In yes, I've a plenty. When I, when yeah. when I became, so I only really came manager, because I, I, I used to look at managers, yeah. I'm like, how are you sitting here for 12 hours? I have, I have a kid at home. I don't, I don't yeah, I'm going. Here. I'm, I'm looking at, like you said earlier, there's, there's people I used to do shifts with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like people be doing shit like they be here from regular. nine. On yeah, the regular. from nine to nine. I'm looking at you all. Like there was a point where I was seeing these people more than I was seeing like my your, family. Your, your family, exactly. You me? Yeah. So, uh, uh, I was, I was we like, need to talk about the hours quickly. Yeah, no, yeah, Honda, Honda. So 12 hours, she's on my own. You know, can't you can't get lunch because nope. you're on your own. No. Can't you, weren't lo- you weren't allowed close yeah, up to shop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me. I didn't, at the end, I didn't give a shit. I remember before, yeah. You couldn't even go for the Ben White. You know what I mean? No, like, you couldn't. You couldn't go for the Ben. Oh. Tell me, I remember one time, right? It was in the morning. Okay, go on. Um, it was in the morning and there was an old, it was a Chinese man, uh, Dave. So he, he'd be there, like, you know, doing his bets. He was on his own. Mm. And then, He's calculating his bets then, like, you know, mm-hmm. he's looking through his dockets. I was dying to go over number two. Mm-hmm. I was dying, but yeah. I don't know where I go. Yeah, fly up, leave the shop. I need to go, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, before Dave someone came toilet. in and started doing bingos and Dave, get out of the shop. Like, so I'd put the mag lock on. I'd sit and I didn't give a shit. You, you left me, no, I didn't give a shit. I'd close the shop. I'd go get me lunch. No, butter. No, butter. Oh. At the end, I didn't give a fuck because they didn't give a fuck about me. Yeah, 100%. At the end, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> And the shop in Turles was so old that I worked in that we had to share the toilet with the customers. Mm. We had the same. Oh, you, what? <laughs> we had the same toilet as the customers. Nah. We had the same toilet as the customers. Do you realise how many times that we had to put out of order signs because there was either needles in the bathroom yeah, boils or get there a lot was of, shit bo- on bo- the floor? Yeah, boils get a lot of. I don't shit on the floor. I don't know people. what word I can I can um because. Saying maybe if you say if you I'll say I don't give a Go shit. On. If you say junkies, it's offensive or so people get offended. But that's what it that's is. What it is. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. The boys 100%. get a lot. I don't need to get a lot of that for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. In oh, actually, in Nina, my two main shops that we both had to share with the customers. Both that's disgusting. Disgusting. Like, that is actually disgusting. Disgusting. But what what I wanted to say to you, right? Just to just to close this segment mm-hmm. of the of the of the show is what was your breaking point? I said, yeah, you. I have to get out of here. Do you know what my breaking point was in, when did I leave? Four years ago. Mm. Cheltenham, 2019. Mm. Cheltenham's like the World Cup of yeah, horse oh, racing. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant week, mm. but I worked 67 hours that week. And do you think I got any thanks for it? I burst my arse. I was there every single, I might as well have just moved in. I worked 67 hours and not once did anyone say anything. We were that short staffed. It was, I used to love Cheltenham in all my years. I used to love Cheltenham. There was a buzz. People would be drinking. You'd be getting tips. Like people would be throwing you money. You know, it was mm. great crack. Everyone wanted. Did you get extra for walking Cheltenham? Uh, we, I know Paddy Power get 50 bonuses. quid. Yeah, 50 we used quid to get a day. bonuses. We got no. Did you know? We got, I remember last, the last Cheltenham, if, if I believe, we got. Uh, 12 euro ahead for go, go, go guys of McDonald's. No, we I think I got, got I think I got 300 euro on top of it. Oh, nice. and, and like at Christmas we used to get a, a gift card and like the money was fairly substantial. It'd be like a um a mastercard, a prepaid mastercard. So that was a good thing. But yeah, I worked 67 hours that week and I was like I can't do this anymore. Mm. Like it, it was my whole life. You should have seen my bank account. My bank account was... Bar high. Bar high. Do you think I had a life? I had no life. Mm. I had no life. I didn't see my boyfriend. I didn't see my friends. I had to stop playing camogie. I had to stop playing sport. I had to stop going out and enjoying myself. Mm. Like, how could you finish a half nine on a Saturday night? I used to have to drive an hour home. It'd be Mm. half ten. And if I was back in Sunday morning, how am I going to go out? Mm. And you're after working 13 hours. Mm. You don't want to go out. Mm. And like it, I spent so it'd be, many it'd be, it'd be twelve so hours. It'd be twelve hours during the week, and on a, on a, on a Saturday it'd be fourteen 13 hours. hours yeah. For what? For what exactly? Why are you open at half eight? Yeah. <laughs> Why? No one comes like, in, even though, especially in my shop. No one came until about eleven. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It was it was nuts. And after that, I was like, right, this is it. I can't, I can't mm. do this anymore. Mm. I was just, I was so unhappy. I was bitter. I just hated yeah. everyone. Yeah. And I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I was like, is this my life? Yeah. Like, the money is good. Yes, I'm getting good money, but I'm miserable. Yeah. 
Mm. I'm literally mm. miserable. And I'm this is why I always say, I always say this to my colleagues. So our colleagues that we we go in there and we're just bitching every. And yeah, that's, that's what it all is. we did every day. We're going, I'm like. We're part of the problem because we're not doing nothing about this. No, we're we're taking everything. This is why I say to people, you, like, okay, you have a situation here, net, yeah. Okay, you're allowed. Listen, we're human beings. You're allowed to complain mm. about, it, but it's up to you now. Like I remember, someone said to me, "Dongo, you need to participate in your escape," and that. I love when people like say these type of bars to me because that sticks that to me. That sticks in your head. You have to part- participate in your escape. Yeah. So I was like, I had to grow. And what my breaking point was because I'm a type of person that. Like a lot of people come to me, especially now I'm in a position of influence doing mm-hmm. this and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people come to me and stuff. And my that job wasn't aligned with me anymore in the sense of this. Yeah, a man, a man told me uh, he has suffered two heart attacks. Right. Right. From losing money in this in this you know job. Yeah, he suffered two heart Do attacks. Do you know what? That's actually after giving me shivers up my back. That's after giving me shivers up my back because I can tell I, I, you finish that and then I'll, I'll yeah. go. So, wow. Yeah, so he talk, like, we were just standing there to talk and cause it was just me and him. And he's told me he's lost houses. He's had like, like his, man, like, he used to put money behind the mm-hmm. counter, like, you know? Mm-hmm. He's had friends that like multimillionaires own yeah. businesses who have killed themselves and all because yeah. of gambling. Mm-hmm. And he's telling me these stories, Niamh, yeah? Two minutes later, he's coming up putting 100 quid. 100 quid. 100 quid. Tell me one night he spent like 10 grand on Paddy Power. Yeah. He was drunk though and he didn't know. <clears throat> He didn't know, like, mm. that. He, next day he didn't know he was spending yeah. that money. Yeah. So I was like... I, I had um, I had a husband come in and get on his hands and knees. I mean, this will actually upset me now. I'm not even messing. <clears throat> no, we had Nessa last time. <laughs> she was crying. Um, Feel free, there's tissue but, there. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but I had, a, I had a man come in and get on his hands and knees to me two weeks before Christmas and beg me to stop serving his wife because she had sold everything in the house. The kids had no Christmas presents. Nothing. Nothing. They had nothing. They weren't going to be able to give their kids anything. And it was all because of her and Roulette. That's actually it. <clears throat> no, take your time. But right. yeah. On a man, a fully grown big man, on his hands and knees, crying his eyes out in front of me. And you know as well as I do, you're powerless. Unless she wants to come in and sign it. I used to try and talk to her, even though you weren't allowed. That was breaking the rules. But why, why is that breaking the rules? Because you're not supposed to deter someone from gambling, even if you think that it's problematic. That's in the rules. But if you can see someone actively destroying themselves in front of you, what else are you supposed to do? Mm. If you have a heart mm. and you're a good person like mm. I am, what are you supposed to do? Mm. And, 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 and with another, that, another thing yeah. is you have the lads that will come in on a Saturday and put a fiver on in a queue mm. and then a month later they're in on a Wednesday or a Tuesday and they're doing Champions League football and then they're coming in and they're doing first goal score bets for GA and then they're putting 20 euro on a queue because they've won a bit of money and do you ever see them cycles mm. and it goes from bad to worse mm. and then they they become one of your best customers mm. but they have nothing to show for it they have mm. no money mm. Oh, they're up. Oh, yeah, I won. I'm after winning two bags, three bags, whatever it is. And then they lose it all. And it's a spiral. And that's that's where the addiction comes from. Yeah. And to have to watch someone like that, that you know, that you would respect, like, deteriorate in front of your eyes. It's mm. the same as someone taking drugs or, or drinking or whatever. Like, you're not going to let someone... That, like, obviously, with your customers, as we said, you build a rapport. Do you think I wanted to see that woman the way she was... Excuse me, or have her husband have to come in and beg me. I, I, I wanted nothing more in the world to never serve her again. Mm. But there, my hands were tied. Yeah. And I tried my best to talk to her. But it, with, with those things, if you ever, if you've ever, ever known an addict of any sort, it goes in one ear and out the other until they want to listen, mm. or, t- or until it comes to breaking point. Mm. So. Yeah, and and that was that was. Um I suppose, in a way, it's it's a good way to kind of finish that yeah. chapter of, of the yeah. team because you don't you don't want me. I'm an ugly crier. You don't. No, want me I don't want you. I don't want you crying. But like, we, I think we've we've covered a, a lot, and you know, I just I just want people. To, this is just to raise awareness, especially with women walking there, and you know, 100%. people gambling there. There's people who are like you just said, like you know, losing out on a lot. Kids aren't getting Christmas presents. It's disgusting. And kids aren't getting fed. Never mind Christmas. Yeah, presents. exactly. You know, so and especially in this, like. It was a couple of years ago I was working there. I couldn't imagine what it's like now with the cost of living. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but on a bright, I know. Okay. But we have two more sections yeah. and then we'll, we'll close. Um, 
just the meme part of the, the show, right? right? So I react to the meme. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I said, let me switch it up because like I see memes on Twitter and all as well. And I was just Justin LaBoy. You'll see it because you follow me on I Instagram love, now. Yeah, so it. I usually react to his memes. But I, I seen this one today and I was sitting there with the missus, yeah? And I was thinking, well, let me read it out for you okay, first, right? So would y'all let your partner have sex with a celebrity crush if they had the chance to, yeah? Yeah. Right, right, hold on, right? So I was th- I was like, yeah, no, like, why wouldn't you? Like, yeah. I, I, I fancy right now, or like Ashanti. Right, I just think okay. she's, she's yeah. just she's lit. fine, she's wine. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, yeah. But I was thinking, you know what? I actually don't like the idea of, I don't give a shit that he's a celebrity. Someone bound my girl, hardly. I don't like, no, hardly. Because at the end of the day, like these celebrities and that, yeah, they, they only think they have more than us is money. Yeah, they're, think they're, about they're only people. So why am I letting another man pound my girl and then she comes back to me? Hardly. So I talk about it, but Actually, would you, yeah. you would. And no, no, don't change your mind. You said you would. You said, so are you saying that because you want to do, you want to have your own or what? Um, no, I think, I think it's because I, I don't know if there would be a likelihood for it to happen. No, but well, imagine think, in, a, in a situation where look, let, let's let's we're in a fancy world, right? Right. But if, if an opportunity did come, say, are you are you for for me or for me? Both years, both years. Okay, knowing your man now, would he would he would he allow that? No way. Did, did you get me? No way. He, I you might have to cut this out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he he made me unfollow every rapper that I followed from the UK because he's friends with people who are rappers. Uh, He's one of them. He's, he's friends with Benny Banks and all them. So yeah. he said, "I can't have, I can't have my girl following people that I know." So, and what's that? What's that? What do you think that's down to insecurity? Or? Um, no, because I can, I can see what he's saying because they live very close to us, mm. and not that I'm anything or one of them Instagrams or anything, but you never know who can slide into your DMs. I hear it. He doesn't know who could slide. It, it could be mm. any of them mm. because. They go for normal people all the time. Yeah, and yeah. because of where I live now, mm. I'm in close proximity to these people. Mm. So I can I can see where he's let, coming from. Let me pivot a little bit, yeah. Um, so like I said, I, obviously I said, right, let, let me see what this girl's about. Let me read some of her tweets. Mm-hmm. So I can see that obviously you're immersed in the black culture, yeah. Mm-hmm. What is it that about black culture that captivated you to be like, okay, I, I'm like I'm I'm into this. Like what 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 what's fascinating about it to you? Um I think it was just a lot of your sense of humor. <laughs> Like the sense of humor is is mad. Like the jokes, how how honest people are. Mm. Like the honesty is just so refreshing because like these days, um, you don't really have that, mm. and it's just the way people are just themselves, mm. and they do whatever they want. They put out what they enjoy and what they think people will enjoy, and that's kind of where it came from. Like I didn't I didn't know much of it. Like what what I started was like. Like I used to listen to like K Coke and all that back in the day, you know, and then it just grew, it grew from that. And now like, that's what I listen to. I listen to rap, I listen to drill. And like, that was before, like, this has been a couple of years. And like, you know, when I first started like watching for the culture and then you see other shows and then that just becomes what you like. Mm. And that's kind of what, that's not just what I watch like, but mm. that's a majority of the stuff that I watch now. Mm. Okay, so last question from me to you mm-hmm. and then I'll have the last section of the show. What, so from talking about, you know, the bookies and stuff, mm-hmm. I'll, go, I'll go this way. What advice do you have for any young lady that is about to step into that world, do you advise for it or against it or um, just to your final take on, I, on the boogie situation? Quickly, I would advise to go into it because it's a good job. It pays well. Mm. It's stability, as you said. Mm. Be very careful. Keep your eyes open. The advice that people give to you, they give it to you for a reason. Mm. And just always be aware and be super careful of the way you move, what you say, and... The, the way you are towards certain people and that's kind of that's the the last thing that it, it is it, i there's there's good and bad in every job mm. like there's good and bad in my job i'm sure your job is the same oh, exactly yeah mm. and like we're in two totally different fields you mm. know so um i think yeah just keep your eyes open and, and know know what you're getting yourself into Okay, so this segment of the show now is one question, one question only, right? Okay. So where I get my guests get to ask me a question, right? You can ask me anything you want, oh God, okay. all, all the game ball, and I have to answer it now. Don't ask me because the last two episodes was what's your fears? 
So I've already answered right. them. So what questions do you have for me? And I have to um, answer. And we close then. God. Um, Anything. What's your definition of success for you in life? Oh, very, very good question. Success for me, for me personally, mm-hmm. yeah, is elevating myself to greatness to take my family out of poverty. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't mean like we're not poverty You're as not in like, bro, bro, like we're yeah. not out on the street, mm-hmm. but it's like I'm, I'm trying to create generational wealth. Do you know what I mean? Where that you didn't have before. My mother and father will never have to worry about anything mm-hmm. again. People around me don't have to I'm worry. I'm with you. Do you get yeah. me? So that's the thing. Yeah. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm tr- I really want to reach them heights. Mm-hmm. Now I'm 29. It's hard, but and this is not me preaching or that. Mm-hmm. I really believe this. With, with God on my side, mm-hmm. everything is possible. Everything is possible, 100%. You know I mean? yeah. Everything is possible. Mm-hmm. So we close on that. But yeah, Nave, you've been a fantastic <laughs> guest. Hopefully, get your nice little dinner into you. You're going to get your oh, chip we'll on we'll it. Our Chinese, Chinese yeah, 100%. Liverpool, Liverpool uh, you're a Liverpool yeah, fan. Exactly, I don't know how to exactly. watch that. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but nah, thanks, thanks for, your, no thanks for sharing your story. Thank and, you very much for having me on. Nah, 100%, 100%. And we'll, we'll do this again another time. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Subscribe, like, all that jazz. Comment, and share. Yeah, all, all that. that. All nice of that good stuff. Thanks, Thank guys. You. I prefer really not to... Um, Brilliant. Not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Turn me up, kid, Spiral.